Mr. Truck here with another exciting trailer accessory review. This week we are reviewing Auto Brake. This is a box that actually controls your trailer brakes on the trailer. And I'm here with the founding fathers, the geniuses behind all this. This is Carlton Sanders, and this is Byron Cooper. And Byron's going to talk about how it works, and Carlton is going to tell us how to install it. So stay tuned. <laughs> Mr. Truck here, and I'm interviewing Byron Cooper. He is one of the, the co-founders, co-owners of Auto Brake. And I'm, I've used it for years, tested it for years, and used it on several trailers. And I kind of know how it works, but I want Byron to tell me exactly how it works so I understand the whole thing. Sure. Besides that it works great, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, Auto Brake has, has evolved, like all sorts of products do. And, uh, and it's basically by listening to the consumer and seeing what's out there. And, and we wanted something that was simple and functional and safe and reliable that it could go on the trailer and just work. And, and that's what people want anymore anyway. Can I do it? Does it work? Can I count on it? And that's how it's evolved the way that it has. Um, traditional brake controls, they're wired inside the vehicle. You have knee knocker units in the dash. Um, we have enough things plugged into the cab of our vehicle between GPS, phones, uh, chargers, games, everything else that's in there. And when you're getting into your truck or your tow vehicle, you want to tow. And you want to know that everything behind you is going to do what it's supposed to do. And that's what we've strived for, and that's what we've come up with with this. So by m removing everything out of the cab, there's no driver interaction, there's no vehicle interaction, there's nothing. It's all on the trailer where we feel it's supposed to be with the trailer brakes. So once the auto brake is hooked up and it gets all the power, as soon as you plug that trailer in, your lights on the trailer go on, well, the auto brake also gets its power that way. So it is on all the time. There's accelerometer and computer systems in it and different programs. It is always monitoring itself, always monitoring itself, wondering what do I do next, what do I do next. As soon as you activate the brakes, your brake lights come on, that tells the auto brake brain, I need to do something. And it's always going to create neutral on your trailer hitch. And what that means in plain English, I'm driving down the road, I don't feel my trailer push me, I don't feel my trailer pull me. It stops when the vehicle stops. And that's, that's what we've, we've done with this. And with technology, there's a lot of new things out there. People that already have a controller in their car or maybe an integrated unit in the dash. This again takes the user element out of it. It's got a brain in there and says, oh, there's another unit in use. I'm gonna disable myself so that one can take care of things. So there's nothing you need to do if you're switching vehicles. You know, you've got a lot of multi-vehicle families anymore or if, if I was gonna loan a trailer to you or vice versa this is on there you don't need to disengage anything you don't need to mess with the wires there's nothing to do um, the other thing Kent is by always monitoring itself and having the brake lights trigger its action this will work in reverse uh, if you're going down a hill you're downshifting this isn't going to activate until you activate the brakes so you're not going to have a problem with brakes burning out or not being able to back up a hill uh, different things of that nature so it's just it's simple it's safe it's just I poke fun at myself because I'm not the electronics guy. I know what I want it to do. And when I get in my car, I want to pull my trailer, and that's all I want to mess with. I don't want to be having interaction with a lot of other things. And so that's how it's been designed, and that's how it's evolved to where it's at. It's always on. So as soon as you're plugged in, as soon as you plug your trailer into the vehicle, it's on. And then what it's doing is it's thinking all the time. There's an accelerometer. There's computer programs, a lot of different modules in there. It's always sensing itself. So as soon as the brake lights come on, the auto brake knows it. I have an action. The brake lights are creating an action. I need to stop, and that's that's what triggers it. Oh, cool. So the computer analyzes all the inputs and decides what to do. Correct. And in milliseconds, I'm sure. Correct. And you're correct about the dash. My dash is covered with junk, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you know how your peripheral vision is. If you put a bunch of stuff down here, like some brake controllers are, you look down there, you lose your peripheral vision. You run into things. So I like getting rid of all of that. You know, and this this the idea of, of having the trailer control its own braking. I mean, that's normal in Europe. I mean, that's actually how all the traders in Europe are. They, right. that's, they have a lot more safety regulations than we do in the U.S. But that's, you know, you got surge brakes on boats, so we understand how it works here. And this is like an electronic surge where that's the correct. computer figures it all out. That's so, no, exactly it's, right. it's a great system. I really like it, and it's simple and easy to do. 
Well, good. Now I know how it works because I knew that there's a brain in there doing something. Right. Besides great. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's uh, it's awesome. It's simple. And then you can just put it on the trailer because that's really, you know, just like what the Europeans do. Let the trailer do its own thing and control its own thing because it knows what's going on. Exactly probably quicker right. than the truck does. Exactly right. But uh, and, and one other thing, if I might add, and I know we show it in the installation video, but as soon as this is calibrated the first time, once you install it and you calibrate it, like I have a camper. This is on my camper. I never need to set it again. I, this, my mm -hmm. camper sits in storage. When I hook it up come spring, I plug it in. It's already at the same setting that it was when I put it in storage. So you don't need to mess with it at all. Oh, that's awesome. Electronic surge. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. I've tested it. I've drove it. I've used it years. And you guys have been doing this for years. This is not something I just started up. That's correct. Been going on for a long time. This is, this is like phase four of it. So oh, it's, awesome. it's evolved and grown up with us, kind of. Cool. Great. <laughs> Okay, got all of our test equipment here. We are trying to test auto brake. It's a box that goes on your trailer and controls the brakes independently. Uh, works by, you know, the movement of the trailer. Uh, it's an electronic brake. It's added on several of the trailers. We're going to move it on to another trailer tomorrow. But today we're testing on electric over hydraulic. And that's what we're trying to do is see how it compares. Everybody else. Oh, if you like, we test a lot of vehicles. And a lot, we get a lot of vehicles that don't have a brake control runner, and then some of those vehicles too, we have to use weight distributing hinges. So using the auto brakes, our only chance of having a brake controller. They don't come with them I'm from the truck or the SUV, and so we, in a lot of those instances, when I look back half ton, we'll have to use a weight distributing hitch. So we can't use other devices, so we have to you have this kind of a setup in order to test it. Okay, here we are. Mr. Truck here doing our auto brake test. We've done 4,000 pound trailer, 6,000 pound trailer, now we're doing 8,000 pound trailer. See how well the auto brake brakes. We're recording off of a V-Box Sport from Race logic that's synced to the satellite, and we've got our mini pad hooked to the satellite. We're gonna see what our runs do. Go up to about 63 miles an hour, and then we'll put it in neutral. Right there, neutral we go, let go off, and then brake harder, and I'll get out. Okay, now it shows what we did. I don't know if you can see all this, how well you can see it. But it shows, and I can't see it here very long. I want the brakes to cool off. Shows 20 to zero, 20 miles an hour to zero. It did uh, 2.20 seconds, 29.24 feet. At 60 miles an hour to zero, it shows 6.31 seconds, 271.94 feet. That was our first run. We will do five of these runs. Actually, we'll do, yeah, we'll do five runs. We're doing a two mile uh, loop now to cool off the brakes. So we don't want them to seize up or get sticky on us. is it was electric surge. We're all used to hydraulic surge on boats here in the U.S. and that's where a hydraulic cylinder activates the brakes on the trailer. This is an electronic that controls it from several angles and this here is weatherproof. You can put it wherever it fits, wired into your plug-in, wired into a strip, whatever works for you. The auto brake electronic surge brake controller is easy to install. You just mount it on your trailer. You can put it inside your trailer, outside your trailer. The control box is weatherproof. I use it on all the test runs that I do with the new trucks they bring me and SUVs. This system does not jerk, it doesn't push or pull your truck. You just wire it to your wiring harness on your trailer 
and it's self-adjust. You've got three power settings, and you don't have to worry about it. After that, you're done. It's simple, fast, and easy. Nothing goes in your trucks. You don't have to clutter up your dash anymore. I use this, this brake controller every week on my test trucks. It works with weight distributing hitches. It works with electrical or hydraulic trailer brakes. I've, I've tested all of that. Now you don't need a brake controller for each one of your trucks or SUVs just in the trailer. This is smooth, pulse braking. Install it and just drive. Carlton on the auto brake, you're going to show us how to install it. I've installed several of these and it's been easy to do. And you got the box that you can put inside the trailer, outside the trailer. It's weatherproof. You can wire it into your wiring harness on your trailer. You can wire it into a strip. So tell me how, how, how you should do it. Right. Uh, I sure can, Ken. I'll tell you what. You, bottom line, you're right. This is set up to be uh, outside. It is weatherproof. Uh, you can set this outside your trailer on the aim frame. You can set it anywhere in the trailer, inside the trailer as well, too. So a lot of areas you can basically place the auto brake. At any angle, it will work as well for you, too. So lots of flexibility there. Basically, what we have here is the, uh, this design, low profile, really close to the, the trailer itself. Um, so it makes it really look really nice. We've got basically a cable now um, where we have five cables coming out or five wires coming out of this at this point. They're color-coded, which is a little different than what we had before. Um, so it's easy for the customer to identify how to wire up the, the uh, auto brake. Um, what you have here is your blue for your trailer brakes. You have your black for power, green and yellow are your brake lights, and then white for ground. And so ultimately, what we provide for you here in the auto brake is uh, four uh, screws that are self-tapping for mounting and really all you need to do is put on some of your connectors here and place it in the junction box wire it based on color coded um, the color coded identifications on your on your junction box and you're good to go um, it's always best to make sure that you check with your trailer manufacturers to make sure that those wire schematics uh, are there for you to look at color wise because some manufacturers may have different colors that they use for their wires in their junction boxes other than that, once you find that and determine that, you can just connect it and it's good to go. Well, that's simple enough. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, rolling. So I just wanted to kind of give you a good example of how to install it um, with a junction box, an open junction box for everybody to see, Kent, on this. And really, again, it's simple. We have, again, these five wires. Blue for your trailer, trailer brakes. You got black for power, uh, green and yellow for your brake lights, and then white for ground. Now, looking at your junction box here, we know that red is the power so we're going to connect the black to the red on there so basically once you get that in place you get an idea looking at the junction box making sure that the wire configuration through the schematics is correct to match up with the auto brakes five wires here then you just connect it so I'm going to go basically blue to blue here I've got black I'm going to put that on the red connection for power and make sure you get that done first and then I'm going to basically put the ground on and yellow to yellow and then green to green now it's always really important to remember should have said this first but it's always important to remember that you have your power off you don't want to have yourself get get a shock in any way <laughs> from a safety standpoint so you know although I did this in there I knew this was uh, not powered up I was okay but uh, make sure you do that uh, for your own personal safety and that's it well, that was easy. That was simple. Same way, just what you want. And these are, you know, the eyelets. If we do it on the cable, it would just be a butt connector. The butt connector, you just got to splice into it, make it maybe a little bit more work on that, a little more detail work on that, but it's not hard to do. A lot of people right. do that. You know, most of the trailers today that are being manufactured have a junction box to make it really easy for you to access it. So it just makes our product even easier to install. Really oh, sure. Cool. And that'd be the first thing you would do is follow the wire, see if there is a junction box sure. or... Stagger the wires and wire it into the yep. plug. Just follow it, follow it, it'll take you right to where you need to be. Cool. Yeah. Okay, Carlton, I want to know, well, I, I know how to do this, but show the folks how to calibrate it. It's a real simple process of setting it up for your trailer for the setting you want. Thank you, Kip. Yeah, definitely. When it comes to calibration, the, the first step of the calibration process is you need to, if you're working by yourself to calibrate it, you need to go to your cab of your tow vehicle and turn the hazard lights on. Um, what that indicates is it gives us, or gives the auto brake brake controller an indication that setting is going to occur. Once you do that, the flashing light is on, all you do is press down these two buttons. One is a gain button, one is a calibrator button, for three seconds and release it. Once you do that, you're going to see a sequence of flashes, probably 10 to 15 flashes total. Okay. Once the calibration is complete, 
At that point, you can then check your game. So just hit the game button alone. That's going to basically give you the settings that you want. There are three settings, low, medium, and high. Okay? You just press the game button after full com calibration is complete and release it, same time, about two, three seconds, and it will flash for you. If it flashes a total of three times, that is your low setting mm -hmm. for the auto brake. If it flashes six total times, that is your mid-range setting for in regards to power. And if it flashes nine total times, that is your highest setting that you have for the auto brake trailer mounted brake control device. And that's it. Well, that's cool. That's the setting I use. I use a lot of heavy traders. So I put it on the top end, and that's what I use it with everything. But, you know, people can adjust that. It's nice to have that option. That's great. Okay, Carlton, you showed us how one person would calibrate this, and that's only what you need to set this, change the settings so you don't do it very often. And there's another option for calibrating this. How does that work? Yeah, that's a great, great point question, Kent. Um, really, what you can do is have another person help you. Um, if they can go into the cab and push the, the brake pedal to hold it, you can go through the same process as we just did in regards to pressing the calibrate button and your gain button when you need to, and they'll take care of it. Once you're all done, you can just tell them to release it, and they're done. So you have the flashing hazard lights if you're by yourself. If you have someone to help you out, just have them push that brake pedal down and hold it, and that's a calibration process you can use as well, too. Uh, now, there's a remote for this, too. Right. We have a remote that ultimately, uh, one thing that's unique about the auto brake is that you don't have anything inside the cab of the tow vehicle, okay? Um, there's nothing that you have to mount there. There's nothing that has to be plugged in. The, we just have a remote fob here, or remote little device, that basically it gives you the ability as a driver to test it, that the, that the auto brake is activated and on. So what you're doing is you start driving down the road, you apply the remote, and you'll feel a little bit of the pulse going. That tells you, it's an indication that we have full operations in regards to that. Most people, after they've done that, they basically put it in a cup, in a cubby somewhere, in, a, in their cup holder, wherever it may be. If you do have a sway control situation, you can press and hold this as well too. What it'll do is it'll manually override the trailer brakes and pull the trailer back, straighten it behind the tow vehicle, and you're good to go. So that's the great option. It's very universal in regards to that. Yeah, that's that's important to me. I like to be able to test the trailer, make sure everything's working, and I like the sway control. I drive in the mountains. If I'm up on curves, I like to be able to use that. Help slow me down. No, this, you, you've covered all the bases here. That's great. Carlton, I, I, you know, I use a lot of different systems and, and trucks and trailers, and so, you know, I, a lot of the vehicles I get either don't have a brake controller or they do have a factory brake controller, and your system is unique to where it actually recognizes what's going on in the truck, so it knows how to work. So tell me how that, that system happens. That's correct, Ken, and it, really what it is is our customers told us that, you know. We basically had it where it would cause some problems and interference because it's two controllers trying to work together to brake the trailer. So we decided, hey, listen, we know if there's an integrated brake control device or another type of aftermarket uh, brake control device in the cab of the tow vehicle, this will sense that and actually shut itself down. So it does keep it to one. Okay, so it's a, that, that ability makes it, again, very clean for the fact that if you have a vehicle or multiple vehicles in the household, one vehicle has a brake control device, the other vehicle that can tow does not, that gives you that flexibility to say, listen, I don't have to change anything other than, in fact, plugging it in. Our system in the auto brake will notice that, shut off the power to the auto brake because you have a brake controller in there already, or sense that there's not one there and take control. Oh, I love anything that's automatic like that. That's great. And that way, you can buy your neighbor's truck, you can do anything you want, and it'll work with everybody. So there's no compatibility issues, there's no warranty issues because it doesn't interfere with anything on the truck. You've covered all the bases. This is great. Well, that's the thing. I mean, we, I, we looked at what customers and asked customers what they wanted. Uh, we basically put that together in the auto brake, and we've come up with a product that we're really excited about, not, not for us, for our customers. Oh, that's great. It's all about safety and convenience, and you've done them both. Definitely. Thank you, Kate.